So today we're going to be 3D printing this very difficult to print Mewtwo 3D model. So let's get started. Now this Mewtwo 3D model is from Carmelo, otherwise known as the Creator X360. Now I got this model through his Patreon, which you can, you know, go over, support, toss a dollar to get the 3D model. I definitely think that this model, for how detailed it is and how good it is, I think it's worth the dollar. The main inspiration I got for actually wanting to print this is I saw Joel's video about dissolvable supports on the Ultimaker 3, and he used this model to represent the functionality of dissolvable supports in 3D printing. And of course, this is the perfect model to demonstrate that with, but I wanted to see what I could do with my more simple single extruder 3D printer. So before I print, I have to get the orientation right, and whenever you're thinking about orientation, you have to think about strength, stability, and surface area. Even with a well-tuned single extruder FDM printer, you're going to have some pretty nasty artifacting between where the support material is and where the actual model is. So whenever you're designing the orientation, you generally want to have the front of the model exposed and you can use the back of the model for supports. And I made sure to do that one, orienting it, to sort of get a ballpark of the orientation. I used Mesh Mixer's analysis to get an orientation. So that's through this. And it just sort of looks at the model with these more smooth models with high polygon count. This tends to take a while. So right now, this obviously would not be a good way to print it because all of your support material is going to be visible. As in, basically everywhere here, it's just going to look absolutely terrible. And that's what all of these sliders up here are for. And the overhang angle, that's just at what angle it wants to create support material. And that's basically everywhere highlighted in red. And 45 degrees, generally, you can keep that number because that's what I have my slicer set at. You could go for a higher angle, like 60, and you would get a bit less support material. But 45 is generally a good number to go with. Now all of these, this weight, don't think weight like mass or like how much an object weighs. Think weight as in how much this algorithm wants to value strength or volume or support area. So strength is sort of like stability, is like how easy it would be for the model to fall over mid print. And generally with a well tuned printer, you can have this pretty low. Now the volume right now, by default, it sets to 100, so it's trying to minimize the total amount of support material that it wants to make. So this would be good if you were going to try to save material, but in this case, having it oriented like this, while it would use the least amount of support material, it would obviously not be good for this print. So we can decrease this a bit. And because we're also going for something with minimal interference area, that's what the support area weight does. The higher this is, the more it wants to try to minimize this, the amount of red area on here. So that one we want to go pretty high. So we hit update again, it'll think, and we'll see what we get. Now, of course, you don't need to use what Mesh Mixer gives you for orientation. You can always use the manual transform tool to orient it in a way that you think would work. But generally I find that sometimes this algorithm comes up with orientation that I wouldn't have otherwise thought of. Now you see this, this obviously, well, if you had like a super tuned printer, like ideally this would work because there's very minimal support area, but of course having it be so tall, all the support material going up, it would very likely fall over. And actually on my first attempt, I had a little bit too much confidence in my bed adhesion and this is what happened. As you can see in this time lapse, it got pretty far, but then it all just went to crap and fell over. So when I decrease that a little bit and strength, because we want to keep this thing from falling, we want to have a little bit of that. All right. So I would say this is very close to the orientation that I actually printed this in. So you can see like all up here, this won't need support material because as you can see, it's not a very drastic angle. But down here, this is where most of our support material is going to be. And we're going to have a pretty tall tower going up to here. But because it has a bit of width, 
I think it should be fine. And of course, we can always improve adhesion by adding a brim around the base of the support material in order to help it stick to the print bed more. But this orientation is very good because it minimizes the amount, well it doesn't minimize completely, it reduces the amount of support material we need to use, and it also puts all of the support material contact in places that we won't be likely to look at. Because, you know, obviously you'd be looking at this model from the front most of the time. So if the back is a bit ugly, that's fine. So we have our orientation right, so we're going to export it, and we can export it as an STL. We can just do that, and then we can send it off to the printer for slicing. So the settings I have for the slicer are right here, and this is also what the G-Code preview looks like. You can see we have about 1300 layers in this thing, mainly because I had the layer height set to 0.1 in order to improve the surface finish. And I'm not using my 0.2 millimeter nozzle in this one, so you know, this print won't take too long. It's gonna be a 12 hour print, which for me isn't very long, but it's still, you know, I probably have this be an overnight print. But the main settings that you wanna look at are your print speed, as well as your support, and also the brim for bed adhesion. So right now I have this set for a 50 millimeter per second print speed, which is fine enough for a model that's this size. That's sort of my mid-slow range. I think I can print up to about 120 millimeters per second, but then I'd get into a lot of artifacting and stuff, and I only use that if I need it to be quick. So I can wait. But another one of the settings that I really like is Z-Hop when retracted. You can see that over there, Z-hop height of half a millimeter. Because the Z-axis movement on my printer is pretty robust, I can have the print move down during travel moves and it helps keep the extruder from running into previously printed features on the same layer. And the support, we have support everywhere so that it contacts all of the overhangs that need to be supported. And we have a support angle of 45 degrees with the line pattern. And I have a 20% infill support density just to sort of help increase the amount of model that is supported and I have a five millimeter brim around the model which helps not only stick the model down but mainly in this case it helps stick down the support material especially that really tall one in the middle. We have our sliced model set up so let's go off to the time lapse. So, now that the print is done and off the build plate, after it cools off of course, I broke off most of the supports with small pliers or just my hand. A lot of them were pretty easy to remove, but for a lot of the smaller things, I used a pair of tweezers and needle nose pliers to help get into the nooks and crannies in this model to help pull out the support material. And after that, I used an X-Acto knife and a small file for cleaning up smaller pieces that I couldn't really remove by hand. And I find that actually the X-Acto knives work better than a file as far as making your model look good. Because if you sort of shave off a small portion of the print with an X-Acto knife, it doesn't leave a rough texture that looks different. Now, I could have printed this in ABS and vapor smoothed it, and I think that would have looked fantastic with this model because of all the organic curves and shapes. And maybe I'll try that in the future after I get ABS smoothing tuned in. But after I got everything cleaned up, I just super glued it to a base I printed a while ago. It was for a D&D &D figure that I never ended up printing, so just glued it to that with some super glue. And then it was done, stood up on its own, and I think it looks really good. All of the organic curves in this shape really show what 3D printing can do if you have a well-tuned machine that can effectively utilize support material, both dissolvable and not. And with how difficult a print this was, I'm very surprised how well it turned out for my $500 machine. And really, this is not out of the leagues of probably what your 3D printer could do. So long as you get it tuned well, this is very possible. The surface finish I think is pretty good, the shininess of it is good, and the layers aren't extremely visible, and there's very minimal support structure artifacting on the model. There's a, quite a bit on the back, but that doesn't really matter because you're not really looking at that. There's some artifacts from the overhangs on the back of the tail, and that's likely due to incorrect temperatures or 
layer cooling. Probably the layers are curling up a bit and then the extruder sort of mushes them back down and it can cause this sort of periodic sort of little scuff marks it looks like. That's how it came off the printer. There wasn't any support material there and in the orientation you can see that's going to be an overhang. So that's what happened there. But nonetheless, I'm very happy with how this turned out. Maybe I'll print it again, scaled up. But that's this 3D model, 3D printed. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments, and I'll see you next time.